Welcome to this Yoga Journal webinar. I'm Lizzie Lassiter, and joining me is Mama Judith Hansen Lassiter. We're so excited that you've joined us to talk today. We have a half an hour together, and our topic is going to be contentment, which is the word is Samtosha from the Yoga Sutra of Patanjali. And we are talking about that today because, <clears throat> excuse me, we're getting really excited about the launch of are the relaunch of our digital course with Yoga Journal Magazine that is about the Yoga Sutra of Patanjali. And um, I'll say it at the beginning to get you guys excited. We have a really special offer for you, anyone who's watching this webinar, and the first 108 people who enroll in the course, which is going to start in August, are going to get 50%. 50. 50% <laughs> off, which is an amazing discount. And what they also put together, which we just saw a proof of, is a 50-page PDF with all of these archival articles that mom wrote for Yoga Journal Magazine thousands of years ago. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> no, but they're, they're her old asana columns. You used to write the asana column for I yoga. wrote the asana column for many years. I thought these were uh, living your yoga columns. But oh, what were those? How to live your yoga. Okay. So these are, yeah, so if you want this offer, I've written down all the info for you. You go to judithhansenlassiter.com slash sutra, and if you use the code sutra149, you'll get the course for half off. For 149. 149. So mom, let's start with a little bit of an introduction. We're talking about contentment today. What is contentment in the Yoga Sutra? What is this concept? Where does it appear? Well, the, the concept appears in the second pada or the second book, which is a practice book. Uh, it doesn't define yoga. It assumes you know that and that's states of yoga. And it tells you how to actually uh, get to that state. And in the niyamas, uh, the first, a second one actually is samtosha, and that's defined as contentment. Now, the interesting thing is, it's not just something that happens to you, according to Patanjali, that contentment is something we are to actively practice. We're actively to take this on and actively to choose contentment. Okay, I, well, I have so many questions. I want to hear more about that. I also want to know if you're joining us live, we're going to open it up for questions. So it could be about contentment, could be about anything in the Yoga Sutra. Mom is available, so please get your questions ready. You can start putting them in the comments. Um, okay, so about Samtosha. It feels like this is different than the other yamas and niyamas. Like, how does it, and I've heard you say this is maybe the most important or the second most important of them. Talk more about that. Well, how much time have you got? Uh, 27 minutes. All right. <laughs> Yes, the first yama, as most of you know, is ahimsa, non-harming. And I think that, if we could take one thing from the Yoga Sutra to incorporate into our practice, into our life, to ourselves, into our being, is to stop harming, to stop harming ourselves with our thoughts and actions, stop harming others with our words and our actions, and to continually cultivate empathy for self and others, that non-harming, if we if we practice asana without it, or pranayama without it, or even meditation without it, it completely obviates the effects of the practice. If we're enforcing our, our practice on, our, on ourselves, mm -hmm. instead of inviting ourselves to the mat or the cushion. So that's to me the most important thing. Can I at least, as I've heard one great teacher say, can I at least be kind? Yeah. And that's practicing ahimsa, and it's pretty hard sometimes. <laughs> but I take the second niyama, our topic for today, samtosha, as the second most important. Of course, telling the truth and non-stealing are important. But there's something so difficult and therefore powerful about practicing contentment. Because it changes everything. Well, what does that even mean? I, I mean, what do you, okay, first, how do you understand contentment as a concept? What's the difference between contentment and happiness, for example, or satisfaction? Well, satisfaction 
to me comes as a it's a thought slash feeling feeling slash thought that arises after accomplishment mm -hmm. I created something I've done something I've turned in my PhD thesis I've cleaned the kitchen I've accomplished headstand I've accomplished something happiness I think is usually predicated on getting our way right when one of those days where everything goes your way we always say oh I had a great day I feel really happy nothing wrong with that but I would like us to understand that contentment is much bigger than happiness mm -hmm. it's much bigger than happiness it is a state of unruffledness, mm -hmm. not disinterest. Unruffled, but not disinterested. Yeah, it's really, really hard. <laughs> yeah, it is really hard. So what practices, I mean, in the Yoga Sutra, Patanjali is suggesting that we actively cultivate it. So does that mean that part of our yoga practice is to do things that make us feel content? Is that also, yeah. is yoga bigger than? This is, a, this is an interesting thing. Why do we take up the practice of asana? Mm. Because we're not content. Because we have lower back pain. <laughs> we have lower back pain. We want to stretch out. We want to get stronger. We want to get calmer. We want to learn Shavasana. Well, that's pretty rare, but hopefully, once we taste it. So we actually end up taking up the practice of yoga because we notice our discontent, yeah. ironically. And contentment, to me, is the willingness to be present with whatever arises without having to reject it. And that makes us a bigger container, which is a Buddhist idea. Can I be content about my lack of contentment? Mm -hmm. Can I sit with it? Can I be with it and let it be as it is without always trying to fix it? That I, I don't get stuck in perfecting my poses, perfecting my life, perfecting my body, perfecting everything, mm -hmm. accomplishing everything. Can I be with my... Can I be content with my lack of content with my sadness as equally as I am content with my happiness? And that's freedom. That's freedom. Yeah, and I'm wondering how it relates as well to asana as we age because there's a, if you take up asana practice in your 20s or 30s, and then if you keep going, there's eventually going to be a place where you're actually doing few. I already feel it. I used to do ashtanga yoga really regularly, and now in my mid-30s, I'm not doing those extreme poses anymore. And there's a sense of sadness sometimes when I think, oh, I, I, I can't do what I used to be able to do. Just wait, it gets worse. <laughs> Or better, depending on your point of view. So is that where contentment needs to sort of slide well, uh, around, under, around that thought? Contentment needs to know that everything changes. And contentment is that willingness. <laughs> contentment is that willingness not only to know that, but to be it. Mm -hmm. I mean, now I'm 70 years old, and... You know, I can do the splits, but it takes a lot more warm-up than it did when I was 23. She loves telling people that she's 70. <laughs> then they always say, like, you look so good. Yeah. For <laughs> but, no, I, I like to keep hearing it because I don't believe it. <laughs> what happened? I'm just kind of figuring this stuff out. Yeah. You know, really, that's what happens as you get older. You think, okay, now I'm getting it. Now I'm understanding the poses. Now I'm understanding the practice. Now I'm understanding the philosophy more. And then you go along with that illusion for a while. And then you go, no, no, no. I wasn't getting it at all then, that decade. No, not even that day. No, not even. And so I'm sure tomorrow I'll think, what was I thinking? I didn't understand anything about content. Okay. And then I'm discontent again. I'm discontent about not being content. Okay, so here's a, here's a question. This whole course with Yoga Journal is about the Yoga Sutra of Patanjali. And why is that important for yoga students and, and yoga teachers to study more deeply? The question, I'm going to answer it with a question. I'm going to, I'm going to be... <laughs> That's going to be a very short webinar, Mom. <laughs> why 
say your question again. Why is it important for us to study the Yoga Sutra? Why not just okay. go and do our dog pose and be, be done happy. with it? Be happy. Because for most of us, that doesn't work. Uh, the thing is, can you do you what do you want from your yoga? I guess that's my question. What do you want from the mat, from the cushion, from the meditation cushion? And there's a story about a village in India that was having a drought, and they announced that water was going to be delivered in a big wagon or wagons. And some people went with a cup and some went with a barrel, and they filled whatever container it was. So I think the mm. universe, wisdom, consciousness, whatever, God, whatever word you want, will fill us to our capacity. And so the question is, what capacity do you want to create? Yes, you get a, a radical shift in your consciousness from doing asana or, or pranayama or meditation reading but do you want radical presence do you want the end of suffering and that's where true happiness comes from because the happiness that we talk about is based on externals yeah. and as as you move toward integration in your practice you want to understand you, like you want to, want to understand all the chakras, you want to understand all the levels of what this practice is about. And so part of that at some point brings you to philosophy. And even that is limited. I like this story of if God were the ocean, the philosopher would sit on the bank mm -hmm. and study it, and the yogi would walk down and jump in. Mm -hmm. So there is a level of becoming the practice that you must go through certain awarenesses. Now, maybe you don't get it from the Yoga Sutra, but that's a good place to start because it, it tells you not only what to do, but it tells you where the pitfalls are. <clears throat> so what I think is really great about the way this Philosophy 101 course, this digital course with the Yoga Journal is structured, the way we structured it, is that actually our working title almost two years ago mm -hmm. 18 months ago when we were coming up with the course the working title was practicing with Patanjali and I think it's really smart how you're teaching in this course you're really offering it it's not esoteric and unattainable no. and accessible we talk about the sutra mom talks about the sutra I ask all the questions and then she really offers us in each of the six modules a physical practice something to actually do on your mat to try to marry the concepts and it's almost a kind of kinesthetic learning yes I don't know any other way to learn I mean you learn with your body <laughs> you learn with your brain you learn with your breath you learn with your body so today I rode a bicycle I haven't ridden a bicycle in a really long time we're on vacation <laughs> yes and I mean a stationary bike but not one that's moving on a street on a street with cars with cars and my body knew my body knew what to do. My mind was going, oh my God, oh my God, there's a car. Where's the brake? Uh, the body has a tremendous wisdom in it. And I, I sometimes ask the question, who told us that the body wasn't sacred? Who told us that the body wasn't, wasn't aware? You've heard me talk about this idea that awareness lives in the belly and consciousness lives in the brain. And I think too much of our practice isn't from our brain down and not enough from our belly up. Yeah. Not enough listening, not enough being, not enough quiet, not yeah. enough stillness to balance our daily life, which is completely the opposite. Can you talk a little bit, ooh, just went dark. Can you talk a little bit about bodyfulness? I love that idea. Well, we talk about, and we've all heard and used the word mindfulness, watching our mind, and my example for me in my life is sitting on my meditation cushion, watching myself not meditate for 20 minutes. And bodyfulness is this word that I like, which is there is a same level of awareness in our body, but we don't pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. We sometimes practice out of discontent. We practice to get something from our body, to challenge our body, to control our body, and we don't listen enough to what the body tells us it's wanting and needing. Mm. And I think that can lead us to contentment. Yeah. 
Okay, I want to see if there's any questions. Yes, we love questions. I'm looking for... We love talking Ooh, to you. I just pressed a button. Um, I'm not sure. I'm going to open the chat tab. If you have any questions, please uh, write it in the chat tab. I'm going to say hello and see if you guys can hear me. Anybody out there? There's something. <laughs> That's me. Oh. It's, oh, it's under the Western tab, question tab. I think she meant to write questions. Okay, so I have, um, Zoe is asking, contentment for me has a slight flavor of settling. Like it's not really what I prefer, but it's good enough. I like what you just said about unruffledness. See how that looks? so good. So maybe Samtosha is related to equanimity. Yes and no, Zoe. Contentment can be fierce. Ooh, what do you mean by what do you mean by that? I will not be shaken mm -hmm. from this presence. I will not turn away from this difficulty. Mm -hmm. I will not repress my my agitation. I will sit there and watch it and hold its hand mm -hmm. and invite it into the tent of my being and to be present with my anger without judging it, not acting out on it, but not judging it, trying to cut it out, make it different, push it down, push it away, analyze it, understand it. Contentment takes courage. It takes strength of will. I like this idea you sometimes offer. It's not, it's not this placid, bland, I'm so good. <laughs> That's what we want. I'm so think. spiritual. I only eat white rice. Okay, so, but sometimes you suggest, I've heard you suggest before to students to do one pose a day in your practice that you can't do. Yeah. You know, to, and maybe to cultivate the contentment of with 10% of the pose or 20% of yes. the pose. Do you exactly. Have, do you have any other practices or homeworks for us, ways we can play with? Well, <laughs> think about Thanksgiving or a family gathering and there's at least one person who you try to avoid and they always sit right next to and you and that's if they don't go sit by them <laughs> that's yoga that's yoga practice contentment watch your breathing watch your mind spin and just sit there and grin mm -hmm. sit there with it don't Contentment to me means I don't run after happiness and I don't push away discontent. There's mm -hmm. two words in uh, the third verse of the second pada, raga and devesha, and they're part of the obstacles to the wholeness, the integration that yoga is. Mm -hmm. And raga and devesha are, raga is what I'm attached to and devesha is what I push away. And all day long we're doing this, trying to get what we want happiness, push away what we don't like, unhappiness. And contentment is watching that process. Yeah. I don't think we're going to change our personality. We're just going to be aware of it. There's so many more questions. Let's oh, oh. Okay. Oh, the type is really small. Let me see if I can. Mm -hmm. Now you're living in my world, baby. <laughs> okay. Um, that's Okay. Scott is asking... Let me move this so you can... Okay, Scott is asking, what is the context of contentment as it relates to the other niyamas, i.e., how does it relate to saucha and tapas? Is that important? Question mark. In my experience, I found it oppositional or complementary to purification saucha. Hmm. She's squirming. You're... I would say, Scott, first, thank you for your question. I would say that your idea of contentment is too small. Mm -hmm. Contentment is huge, and it, to me it encompasses all the yamas and niyamas. Oh. Because I, I think you may have heard the chant, Tatwamasi, that thou art. We are already equanimity. We are already pure. We are already truthful. We are already whole because we are deeply connected to the divine. And our contentment is already there. We don't we can't make it happen. Yeah. We can just stop covering it up. And so if we take the idea that tapas is a punishment that 
that will lead us astray. Discipline is consistency, it's not force. And when I hear the word tapas, I'm hoping that you agree with me that it's not about forcing. It's about moving in the direction of with compassion mm. and being present with what I can do and what I can't do. Mm. Contentment is much bigger than just getting somewhere and at last now I'm content and it's over. I, I did it. You're never finished mm. because contentment, as I said before, is the willingness to be present with your discontent. Force is never, never, never the answer in yoga. And the deeper you go, the less force. Because force comes from ego. Mm -hmm. And ego's covering up your contentment. What? What? Because ego wants things. It's the thing is though, some people misinterpret this, and this this was me for a long time, that it's this placid sort of Dull, vanilla, like just state of total calmness. Sam Tosha. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> it's a fierce warrior. It's, it's a, a loving, fierce contentment. It's a fierce contentment with a loving heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't push away anything. Go sit by that relative. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, Sandy is asking, do we need to read the book in order to take the course? No, before you take Philosophy 101 with us, our digital course on the Yoga Sutra, you don't need to have read the sutra, but we'll lead you week by week through assigned readings. And we offer you different translations to look at. You can follow through and read them either before you take the chapter or afterwards, use it as an aid. But we're going to take very specific, uh, what I think are basic uh, verses. We're not going to go into too much into the levels of samadhi, in other words. We're going to talk about it, and this is what is, has been, I believe, my entire teaching career. The emphasis of my teaching is not academic. It's partly academic, but it's mostly practical. Okay, great. I know where the femur is. How does it move? Okay, great. I know what Santosha means. How do I do it? Yeah. This is what we want you to get in the course, because otherwise, otherwise. you're just sitting up in your room in your yoga mat. and I don't have time for them. What are, you, are they going to put on my tombstone? <laughs> You miss her so much, her hamstrings were so loose. That's not what I'm putting. That's not what I'm doing. So it's really applicable to uh, children, family, relatives, work. It's, it's about, isn't yoga a call to learn to live really well? Mm. It's call, The mat is calling us and saying, come and live well within your body, within your family within your city, within the citizen, the, this world citizen that we all are so markedly today. It's calling us to that wellness, that wholeness, that samtosha. Hmm. So Scott says, thank you. He actually said something really nice. Well, he said, wow, thanks JHL for sharing your wisdom. Thank you, Scott, for sharing yours. And Elizabeth, is asking how can you apply contentment to a portion of your life that is not how you would like it to be I'm thinking of an example if you have an injury you could have a, a, something not working in your physical body how can you practice contentment if you're limited in your ability to do exercise or to practice awesome let me tell you I mean let me respond to that with a question <laughs> these are our two choices the difficulty we get when we practice yoga, the difficulty we get when we don't. <laughs> Pay your money and take your choice. What do you what yeah, what do you mean by that? It what do you so want? Cheeky. It I'm very cheeky. What do you want? What do you really, really want? Is it bhakasana, ekapada bhakasana, or is it a sense of contentment? And I, I have found that when I've had injuries and difficulties and setbacks, that is the best time in my yoga practice. Oh, really? I've never heard you say that. <laughs> You're saying something because, new. Because tell us what do you because mean? Because I'm forced to look at my attachment, my uh -huh. clinging to per to performance, and I learn to slow down. I learn to pay attention. I and I learn things and invariably someone shows up in class with the same problem 
and I have so much more compassion. Injuries teach us compassion. Mm -hmm. It's like in your face compassion. Mm -hmm. And so the, the question we should always ask ourselves is what can I learn right now? What what is the universe or what is life offering me right now? And who knows? But if I think about it as an opportunity, as a lesson to help me learn something, if I shift my perception, those are the sweetest moments when I learn to slow down, to pay attention to my body, to understand that it's trying to give me a message. So I hope that helps you. Okay, Jonathan just wrote, Jonathan from Restorative Yoga Club, who you saw. Hello, Jonathan. He's saying, hi, Lizzie, hi, Judith. Thank you for sharing with us today. It helps me to remember the definition of contentment as being content with the contents of life. Well, I, I like that, Jonathan. But I want to I wanna give us a little refinement of that, if I may. It doesn't mean I say, oh, well... People are suffering. I'm content. Oh, well, that child just fell down in the street. I'm content. It doesn't mean that we don't act to help others uh, in, in difficult situations that we see and read in the news. We don't choose the good. We don't choose life. We don't make a uh, volunteer to help people who are less fortunate than we are or offer free yoga classes or be present with people who are suffering an illness or look at the racism and sexism and all kinds of isms that live in the world, the evil, if you would, that lives in the world. We don't turn away from that. We, we make an action, but the action doesn't come from anger or judgment or I'm going to fix you which we can get caught up in in our asana practice. I'm going to fix you. That has a certain form of violence in it. Mm -hmm. That, that, that we, we can give our full selves and know that that's enough, even if it's not exactly, if the results are not exactly what we wanted. We give our full heart with pure intention. That comes from contentment. And do the best you can. Okay, we have two more minutes before we close. I want to give everyone all of the details if they want to sign into the course, enroll in our Sutra course, Philosophy 101 with Yoga Journal. And while I'm doing that, Mom, think of something, think of a send-off for us, some way to close as we go off into our day in the middle of our week. So the course is called Philosophy 101. It's with Yoga Journal. It's online. It's six weeks which is paced, but then you have access to it afterward to work at your own rhythm. And here is the information to enroll. You go to judithhansenlassiter.com slash sutra, and that'll direct you to the page. There's a really great video that they made um, about the course, so you can just go and watch the two-minute video. And then we're offering the first 108 students who enroll in this round of the course are getting this massive discount, 50% off. So you want to use the code SUTRA149 to get that. <laughs> Mom is like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> SUTRA149 to get the course. And we really hope that you enroll. There's going to be a live component each of the six weeks, and we hope that we, it'll be very similar to this. Um, and you'll be able to come on and ask questions about the material. Yes, we'll do this again. As you're working We hope to through. see you. Yeah, hear from, from you. you. So, okay, one last send-off for us, Mom. So contentment says there's nowhere to go and there's nothing to do. And contentment also says there's a lot to do and a lot, lot of places to go. So go and do. And don't do and don't go. That's contentment. That's your koan. Thank you so much, Mama. Namaste. 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 Bye. Bye. Thank you, Rachel, from Yoga Journal, for helping us with this webinar. Bye, you guys. I don't know how to end.